Good morning, STA. It's another beautiful day in the STA neighborhood. And here we are. It's Wednesday, January 27th. It is the Holocaust or Shoah Memorial Day, so we will be doing a lengthier prayer later. But first, weather. So looking at the Weather, weather Network app, your weather today in Oakville is, well, cold. It's all below uh, zero temperatures, but we see the sun. So dress warm. Uh, you might remember Mr. Alderson's tips on how to dress for outdoor activity. You know, a base layer, a medium layer, and a um, outer layer, a shell. So just a shout out to some uh, a new viewer. I I coaxed Miss ZZ to watch, so she's letting me know she's watching. So Miss ZZ, good morning. And our guest today, you've seen him before, and he's come back, and it is Mr. McDougall is here with us. You can't get rid of me, Miss. That's okay. We don't really want to. Hey, shout out to Miss Z. Yeah, Miss Z, she's watching. I kind of said, hey, uh, we, we were chatting yesterday. So, go. Mr. McDougall, in case the, the people at home watching are, aren't aware, could you kind of let them know um, what's happening with you? Yes, I am I am moving on. I am, uh, at the end of this semester, I am moving over to Assumption, which is the high school in Burlington. So, uh, unfortunately, my uh, these are my last week and a half. That uh, at STA, it's been sense. a short time, but a memorable time. It's been a great time. It's a great staff. It's a great set of students, and it's a great building for sure. So, uh, you know, I, if I had a wish, I wish I would have spent a little bit more time. But you know what? It's it's, it's time to move on. Apparently, so I'm moving it's, on. And and in case people don't know, he's being promoted. He will be principal yeah. at Assumption. So kudos. I think you're going to make a fabulous principal. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's a um, different role, different challenges for sure. And I, you're you're cut out for it. Thank you, Miss. I appreciate. So it. today I have a different set of questions oh, for you. They're not the the rapid fire type of questions. These okay. are like conversation starters. So to kind of give us a, a deeper insight, which TV show would you pick to live inside for a week? Oh. Great question. Now, Seinfeld's boring. I want uh, friends always look like they're having a great time. Eh? I hope Crystal's watching. Oh, <laughs> it's a little early like, for her, isn't it? No. <laughs> oh, and um, who won? Who won that trivia on Friends? Madame Young, I think, is is another yeah. Friends expert. So you know, I've got I've got a seventeen year old daughter who is. Uh, I think she's on her third time through watching the entire series. So uh -huh. it's always on in the house. So uh, you know what? That'd be a good one. All right. So friends. Okay. Why not? Okay. Now, because you like sports, which <laughs> famous athlete would you love to meet? Oh, famous athlete. Great question. Whew. Muhammad Ali would be great. You know, just not only for the boxing, but what he, he went through in the mm -hmm. 60s. Um, uh, who else would be a great one to of course, uh, being a hockey guy, uh, Mark Messier is my all-time favorite. You know, I had the opportunity to meet him once, which was fantastic. Uh, I'd love to sit down with him and uh, ask him a few questions. Joe Namath, being a uh, New York Jets football fan, unfortunately, we had a rough year this year. Uh, but uh, Joe the Throw would be great to sit down with, with as well. All right, so keeping with the athletic theme, mm -hmm. and, you know, th this might uh, hopefully – might, you know, a lot of people might think of this one. Would you choose to be the worst player on a winning team or the best player on a losing team? Oh, worst, worst player on a, on, on a winning team. You know what? Collectively, that means everyone's doing their job. Everyone's doing well. Uh, doesn't mean I'm a bad player. I'm just the worst player on that team. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, right? It's all relative. Yeah. Yeah. And because tomorrow is Bell Let's Talk Day, I thought I'd bring in a question like this. Okay. When you're having a bad day, what do you do to feel better? 
So if I'm having a bad day, what I, I go down um, and I, I see the kids down at spec ed because their outlook on life is, is amazing. And they always make you feel better when you're down there. They're so happy. They're so joyful. You know, they're, they're never down. They're always up. And, and it's just seeing the sheer joy in their face, the, the love they have for school and their teachers um, is, is refreshing. It's fantastic. So, uh, you know what, anytime I'm at school, and I'm having a bad day. I'll, I'll, I'll get out of my office. I'll take a walk down and I'll, I'll see the kids down spec ed because their outlook on life is phenomenal. And keeping in line with that, mm -hmm. when was it most difficult to persevere when you wanted to quit? When was it most? Okay. Um, so what did I do as a result? What's the question? I guess, yeah. Like what, when you were tempted to quit, what kept you persevering? The end goal. The end goal for sure. Um, and, and what it was, I was doing my master's and there was a one course, it was the final course. And, and it was all on statistics, uh, mm -hmm. it, which was definitely not my, my strong suit. And it was yeah. so hard and it, it took so much time. But, you know, you look at the end goal itself um it's just it just kept you motivated kept you going it kept you thinking okay this is why i want to do this no one said it's going to be easy you know and it's when times of of trouble and strife you know that is a real mark of an individual how they get through it life isn't easy you're gonna come up to these hurdles all the time uh, it's a mark of a person on how you get through it right? yeah so it's inner strength it's that inner toughness um, you know, we can't always have a crutch. We all, you know, there's times we need just to persevere, find a way and, and make your way through it. But digging it was really, like digging really, really deep. Yeah. Now also in line with, again, I was thinking of you when I was going through these, these, uh, questions, what would be on the menu for your ultimate birthday dinner? Fantastic question. Oh my gosh. And I'm sure if there's staff, the staff that are watching are like, oh, okay, McDougal and food. Here we go. What am I starting with? Oh, man, I'm starting with wings for sure. A little appetizer, maybe some ribs in there as well. Then we're moving to the seafood platter. We're going to get some shrimp in there, some lobster, some crab. Nice. Got steak in there somewhere. Right. Yeah. And then we're finishing with strawberry cheesecake. Nice. Ah, how's that? Nice. Okay, and one kind of uh, more going back to a little serious. What do you most admire about your parents? That they were hardworking people. You know, um, with, with with their background, they they both came, uh, you know, from a farm life, and they moved both moved to the big city, Guelph. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <It's not laughs> the big city. And you know, they they uh, they both changed their career. My father became a lawyer, uh, through a lot of hard work and it wasn't easy because the money wasn't there, you know, to, to get through school and so forth. But he again, persevered, you know, being my role model for sure. Um, and, and my mother was always, you know, she was a stay at home mom for the longest time. Um, but then, you know, she herself got into the work world as an office assistant as well. And I give them credit for changing up one way of life of what they knew their entire life to a whole new brand new, way of living. So uh, definitely, uh, you know, hard work pays off. Wow. That yeah. is incredible. Yeah. yeah uh, sure. And so I want to end with, because you've been in, in education for a while. Are you saying I'm old? No, no, <laughs> not at all. Because <laughs> then I'd I be out there. I know Camastro saying you're old, but yeah. You, you know what happens, uh, you know, what George Carlin said, when you point the finger at someone, there's three pointing back at the person. So I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers. Yeah. What has surprised you the most through all these years in education? Yeah, good point. So if I think about when I first got into education to where I am now, you know, when I first got into education, it was just the start, really, of the Internet. <laughs> and, and, and how much technology has influenced education and, and where we're going um look at the past year has been terrible it has in, in regards to how we approach everyday life we've had to change 
completely. But I think as we're starting to phase out of the COVID days, there are going to be some things that, you know, as a result of COVID that we've gotten really good at. Look at this platform. I know. Right. You know, uh, teams meetings and so forth. Uh, it, it's technology has influenced education in a way that I think we're going to realize it's been so beneficial when we look back on the year 2020, 2021, you know, yeah, it's amazing the things that we can do now as a result of being forced into something that we didn't anticipate. For sure. Yeah. So one last question before we, we have to bid you farewell, but sure. not yet. You're still with us for another week and a half. Yep. What advice would you give to your younger self? Invest in land. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, real estate. In land. Um, what else advice would I give myself? That's a great that's a that's a really good question. Um, you know what? Always always treat people with love and respect. It's amazing how many times in life you come across the same people over and over again. Um, you know, my family and I we just moved back to Guelph. Well, my wife and I, we grew up in Guelph. And coming back to Guelph and seeing people again that you haven't seen, since, we've been gone for 30 years, you haven't seen since high school and, and reconnecting uh, is an amazing thing. Uh, in education, you know, I'm moving on to assumption. Um, it, it's amazing the people that I've worked with in the previous schools that I've worked with, you know, and, uh, you know, good people that, that you came across then and, you, you know, you're excited to work with again, um, you know, and look at the people at STA, you know what? You're not going to find a nicer staff, a more committed staff anywhere. I said um, that. Yeah. And, and I know, uh, even though I'm leaving next week, there's going to be a time where I'm going to be working with some of them again someday. And I look forward to that. You know, so, yeah, you know what? Treat people with kindness, love, and respect. And you'll find that as you go through life, um, that it'll be repaid to you in, in spades and you get the opportunity to reconnect over and over again. Life cyclical that way. It is. It is. Well, that's excellent advice. Thank you, Mr. McDougall, for coming on a second time. Anytime. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, SDA. No it's problem. been awesome. So uh, have a good day, Mr. McDougall. You as well. Have a good day, everyone. Take care. Take care. All right. So um, we're going to move right into anthem right now because our prayer is going to take a little longer it's going to be a, a little more substance to our prayer because today is the holocaust memorial or uh, the show and memorial day so i think it's important that we pause and really do um give give this day the proper reverence and reflection that it deserves so we're going to start with uh we're going to go into anthem and then we'll go into prayer. So, you know, sit or stand. So to get us started into prayer, I found some lovely videos that I would like to share, and we're going to start with this one.
In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Each year we are invited to observe January 27th as Holocaust or Shoah Memorial Day. This date is the anniversary of the liberation of the Auschwitz camp on January 27th, 1945. In Hebrew, the stem of the word Holocaust, Ola, means burnt offering. And burnt offering is translated into the Greek of the New Testament as Holocautama. There have been, I may have mispronounced that. There have been implications in the past that using the very word Holocaust or burnt offering for the atrocities of the Second World War could infer that the Jews were sacrificed on behalf of the rest of the human race, thus almost legitimizing terrible acts of genocide. For this reason, many Jews prefer to use the word Shoah to describe the murder of the Jews and other so-called minorities during the Second World War. The word Shoah simply means desolation, destruction, or catastrophe. During the war, it is estimated that 2 million Jews were killed by the Einsatzgruppen troops in the Soviet Union. 3.5 million Jews were killed in the gas chambers of Auschwitz, Chelno, Sobibor, Balzac, and Treblinka. And half a million Jews died in the ghettos of Eastern Europe of reprisal attacks, hunger, disease, and exhaustion. Six million in all. Millions more gypsies, Slavs, Russian POWs, the physically and mentally disabled, homosexuals, and others in minority groups perished. The Shoah Memorial Day commemorates not just the Holocaust or Shoah, but also to acknowledge the repeated occurrences of genocide, such as those that occurred in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia, and the one that continues in Darfur to name a few. And we are to renew our commitment to combat racism, anti-Semitism, xenophobia, and homophobia. So I'd like to share some readings. And the first one comes from the letter of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves, and on going away, immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. And if you think they are religious, and if any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father, is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. And now I'd like to share a passage from the Gospel of Matthew. <clears throat> you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. And I just want to pause now and share another video. Thank you. 
the smallest hole. And we were there for almost two years, ten months. And so before we close with our closing prayer, I think it's important to note that words matter, our attitudes matter, our perspective on who we are as a community matters. We are brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter the color of our skin, the, the different ethnic foods that we eat, the creeds that might be different from ours. We're all human. And whenever we label someone or put someone down, we're basically saying you're not as human as hot I am. So we heard in the Gospel of Matthew that those that, you know, no one puts their light, you know, under the cupboard. Let your light shine. Let your words be inclusive. Let your heart be wide enough to include everybody. And let us recommit ourselves to being peacemakers and peace builders. And so let us close with our prayer. God of the past, present, and future, we, re we remember today the six million Jews murdered in the Shoah, the millions of other victims of Nazi persecution, and all those who have been targeted and killed in subsequent genocides, Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia, and Darfur, to name a few. We remember those who, having survived genocide, share their stories with us. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for the lessons of human stories, both in their suffering and in their joy. We remember those who stood up against injustice and saved lives. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for their example. Together, we acknowledge the sacrifice of those that stood together with those who suffered during the Holocaust and other genocides. And we affirm that every life is loved by you, O Lord, and is sacred. Yet during the Shoah, too many failed to stand together with their neighbors. Oppression, apathy, fear stains your world and contradicts your love. So we pray that you will inspire us now as we stand together on this day in the love that we know of God in Christ Jesus. Let us commit to remembering. And let us glorify God in our words and actions. We make these prayers in the name of Christ Jesus, who through his life, death, and resurrection, journeys with us into the eternal hope of your truth and light. 
St. Thomas Aquinas, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Just a few announcements. Uh, I'll put that back on. Tomorrow is Bell Let's Talk Day. My guest tomorrow will be Mr. Asiyama, and we're going to talk uh, just a little bit about mental health and self-care strategies and that sort of thing. And I will put him on the hot seat and ask him some questions too. Uh, other announcements, and this is for those interested in the Canadian Computing Competition. Uh, you will be allowed to register with your school and participate remotely. You may participate even though if you've not taken a computer science course at STA, however, uh, programming knowledge is, is required. And there are practice tests available. And the most important announcement is this. Uh, and this is also on the STA app and on Twitter and on our website. So registration closes next Friday and the contest date is February 17th. So that's all your announcements today. Everyone have a great day. Be strong, be Raider strong, be, you know, thrive, don't just survive. And if you need to reach out, we're here. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Take care, everyone.